Hello, Mr. Randy here. Uh, today we're going to take a look at PhotoWorks 360 in SolidWorks. PhotoWorks 360 is an add-on module. If you're in a commercial version, you have to purchase it. Um, that allows you to do uh, high resolution renderings using uh, actual materials, if you will, uh, to get a more realistic model. Um, so the first thing I want to do is uh, load Photo PhotoWorks 360. Um, so I'm going to go up here to Tools, and off the bottom of the screen, you won't be able to see this, unfortunately, there's a button that says Add-ins. I'm going to click on that menu item, and I'm going to choose PhotoView 360. By the way, if you check this box at home, if you had it or at work, it would load it automatically every time you launch SolidWorks. I'll click OK. And now we have a Photo View 360 pull down menu. If you prefer working from the tray here, you can also right click and turn on the Render Tools option, which is on for me. And you can get the Render Tools right here also. Um, so I have this uh, part opened up. And the first thing I like to do when I'm going to render is I like to get rid of origins and planes and get those out of the way. Another thing you're going to want to do is to get yourself into a perspective view. There's a regular view, and here's a perspective view. And you can see that this part is kind of narrowing as it goes from right to left. It's a little bit of a perspective look. Now, there's a, a lot of different ways that you can attach material to a part file. And I'll try and show you a couple different ways. I'm going to click on the, the colored sphere right here. This is the display manager. So let's click there. And you'll see this come up. And if I expand that, there's a, a problem. And I'm not sure if it's with our template or if it's a SolidWorks thing. That uh, fillets are treated separately from the whole rest of the model in terms of applying uh, color or or material to it. So there's a couple of ways you can deal with this. Right now I'd like to apply a color to the whole part. Okay, In my handout to you I tell you to select all of these things and then you can click on appearances. So that's one way you can do it. Um, another way you can do it is you can right click uh, on the color right now and edit the appearance and that will grab the whole model and then you can change the material or appearance. Um, another option I'm going to cancel out is to delete these items and then you can just click on this <coughs> and edit the material. So we'll right click and edit appearance. That should also uh, grab everything. So if I picked a a new color you can see it applies it to the whole part. If you don't do that when you apply to the part you'll find that all your fillets are still going to be gray or whatever. Okay, um, So you can use any of those methods to get there. I find the easiest if we escape out of here. The easiest is just to right click on the top item here and then edit appearance and that gets the entire model for your first choice. Um, however, I would say deleting the fillets is a little cleaner because if you have to do further edits then you won't have to worry about those things hanging out there. So you can do whichever you want as long as you get the results. Alright, I'm going to click on uh, EDM plastic. It's this kind of bumpy plastic uh, and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to apply that kind of bumpy plastic to our part. And um, let's do a, a preview render here. This might pop up off screen. And it'll take it just a minute to start. Yeah, this popped up way off screen. Hang on just a second and I'll get it to you. There it is. And it's going to do a quick preview render here for me. I just want to see how that material looks. And I probably should have picked a different background. So uh, let's let this run for just a minute. I think you can see it's kind of a rough kind of dull uh, dimpled surface here. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, now 
in all of your assignments, you're going to need to choose a background or scene. Um, we're in plain, right, right, plain white right now. Uh, there are lots of choices. Uh, many of these lead to really bizarre results, like grill lighting will give you rather odd things. So um, do be careful. But I'm going to go to a warm kitchen. We're going to use that for one of our assignments. Um, you can see the background has changed. This also changes the lighting, the color of the lights, the location of lights, etc. So let's do a preview again um, and see if it looks any different. Uh, you can see it's a little brighter now. I suspect we might see the roughness of the texture a little better um, with this as our background scene. So one of the things you can do is play with background scene. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this now. Another thing to remember is, you know, you should play with orientation to make sure you're showing off the model to its best. Uh, we want to be able to see all the important features. So you're going to want to play with the orientation of the model and make sure that we're seeing a good view uh, of the part. Now, uh, while it looks kind of shiny in this light, we know that it's a dull color, but I would like the the holes and those top surfaces on the post to be a shinier material. So I'm actually going to zoom up quite a bit here. And I'm going to grab that hole. You can see I have the cylinder. I'm going to hold the control key down and grab the countersink and that top face. And I'm going to do that for all of them. Again, you'll notice it looks pretty shiny, but in normal graphics window, it doesn't go to the trouble of, of showing you all the detail of the material. So now I'm going to edit appearance for those. And I'll do it through the menu just to show you. Edit appearance. I could have clicked over here. And I'm going to go to uh, a high gloss plastic. And I think there's a blue in here. There it is. We'll select that and we'll hit OK. And let's click out in space and get that out of the way. You can see they're a little darker blue in our image here. And let's see if we can get this really big on the screen. And uh, let's do a little preview window. Again, the preview window is not great. I'm not a big fan of the preview window. But I think you can see already that we've got kind of a shiny blue surface there. Looks very different from the rest of the part. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. That's what I'm going to be after. So I'm going to leave that just the way it is. And I'm going to close this window now. Now, I'm going to do something strange. I'm going to actually uh, control drag this part kind of behind the window a little bit. Behind the feature manager, I'm sorry. And in fact, at this point, you might want to just kick Feature Manager out of the way. And I want to get the kind of even distrib distribution of the part on either side here. Now, we're going to do a final rendering. But before we do that, we want to set it up properly for our situation. So uh, I'm going to go to Options. And this is going to open up an Options panel for me sooner or later. Sorry about that. I have to. Uh, bring my feature manager back out to see those options. So let's pull that back out. Uh, you can see that custom is selected. You, for my assignment, you have to make sure that. I'm going to put in uh, oh something fairly large, 1600 by 1200. That works pretty good for 8.5 by 11. Um, I'm not going to touch any of these. We want JPEG format. And you're going to have to make sure that you browse and go to your KID folder on the student drive. I'm just going to go to the desktop here um, to set your default image path because when you save the image out it's just going to save it wherever that goes. If you don't change this it's going to save it on the computer's hard drive and as soon as you shut down it's going to disappear. Um, then you can make decisions about render quality and final render quality and all that. We're not going to play with any of that. So set your resolution, select custom, select set your resolution, make sure it's in JPEG and make sure you browse and go to your folder. I'm going to hit OK now. And now let's get this out of the way finally. 
And now we're going to do a final render. And this may also pop off the screen. Nope, it's going to come up right in the middle. It's going to start with a preview render. And then the final render box is going to come up. I'm going to try and get uh, as much of that as I can on screen for you. does take a while. Rendering is uh, pretty intense uh, mathematics going on here because it's bouncing light off everything and applying those materials and looking for reflections and all that kind of stuff. So it's very slowly you can see the dot patterns coming in and it should pick up a little bit in speed here. I think you can see we're going off the edges of the screen, or we're going to go off the edges of the screen here. Um, so in this situation, uh, you'd probably want to cancel the render and uh, zoom out just a little bit. But we're going to let it go rather than sit through this a second time. I don't know if you can see it in the YouTube video, but uh, you're starting to see uh, blue dots in the middle where the part is taking shape. This is, as I said, pretty intense. And as I have a variety of applications going, including the screen recorder, um, we're uh, using too much of the CPU here. So it's uh, uh, going a little slower than it should for you in lab. I'm going to hit the pause key, and uh, it'll pop back up, and we'll be further along. Okay, we're back in the last of the irradiance passes is happening here. So you can see it's going to go off your screen in just a moment. My window is just slightly bigger than what you're seeing. And now uh, it's rendering. You'll notice uh, two little dancing boxes there. Uh, rendering is one of the, as far as I know, the only application within SOLIDWORKS that can take advantage of a multiple core processor. So if you have a dual core processor like we do, then you see two little boxes. If you had a quad core processor, you'd see four boxes dancing around. It'd go twice as fast. If you had a six core or eight core processor, you'd get even more. So if you did a lot of rendering, it's one of the few places where having multiple cores in SOLIDWORKS is of much help to you. Um, but you can watch the dancing boxes, and, and where they've already passed, you can see what the final render is going to look like. So if you look in that upper left corner, um, you can see pretty significant texture to the, uh, the blue parts that we want it to be dull. Uh, maybe even too much texture for this part. It looks pretty decayed. Uh, but also notice then that the tops of the bosses and the holes are a nice shiny blue. Um, so it looks like they've been either machined or the mold was different in those areas to give us that glossy, shiny look. Um, I'm going to let this kick along, and I'm going to pause one more time, and we'll pick up in just a minute as this is just wrapping up, and we'll look at how you save this out. Okay, our little boxes are just about done uh, cleaning up the image. Uh, you can see now the main image is uh, this nice gnarly blue plastic uh, with those shiny tops and shiny holes. Um, and it's all done now, finally. I'm going to come up here now and uh, we'll click on Save Image. And I can save this file. We'll call this uh, Blue Part. And hit Save. So it's now a JPEG file. A common thing that students try to do is open that file in SOLIDWORKS and it doesn't work that way. Um, so that, that JPEG file could be opened in actually an Internet Explorer or on your desktops at work. You have an icon on the desktop for paint.net. Uh, so you can open it in there. I'd like you to do that actually and put your name on the, on the rendering before you print it and you can print out from there. Uh, so don't try to open these in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, SOLIDWORKS does not open JPEG files. Uh, open them up in paint.net. Make sure they look okay. Um, have me look at them. Uh, sometimes we'll brighten them up a little bit in paint.net before we print them because the printer tends to make them a little darker. 
Um, so ask for a little help. Again, as I said, uh, I should have zoomed back a little bit before I produced this rendering. Uh, it's too tight, um, but uh, uh, for our purposes, it's okay today. And I'll close this out. Uh, so you would want to zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's click on Final Render one more time and watch that preview window come up and make sure everything is in the window. Yeah, that would have worked better, okay? And likewise, uh, when this comes up, we should see the same results. So um, take a look at that when you're getting ready to work and make sure the part is kind of centered up where you want. Some scenes will be very shiny and you'll get great reflections. If that's the case, you might want your part up towards the top of the screen so that you have room under it for the reflection to show. Uh, so do think about that. Uh, but in general, get this as big as you can within the rendered space. We don't want to print out this big piece of paper with all this colored ink and have the little tiny image in the middle of the paper. We'd like that part to be as big as possible. You're trying to show this off to a client or a prospective customer. You don't want to give them some little tiny thing. Uh, obviously, this could be posted on a web page. You could even make a wallpaper for your computer screens with uh, renderings. So. Uh, lots you can do with the JPEG files. All right, I think that'll do. Uh, so there's a quick introduction to rendering. You have three parts to render for your assignment this week. And as always, enjoy.